Okay, so now we come to the final component of the lecture, which is using the notions we've already seen, that is the notions of a possible world and a proposition, um, to try and illuminate the notions of knowledge and belief. So we're now moving from possible worlds and propositions to, to, to epistemology. What we're going to do is we're going to work up to a very simple theory, um, the possible worlds theory of knowledge and of belief. Um, because it's going to be an important touchstone going forward in the course. We're going to see authors that disagree with this view for various reasons, or we're going to see different ways of fleshing it out. Um, but going forward, it's going, to have a, it's going to be important for you to have a sense of what this view says. Before I tell you exactly what the view says, it's first best to get a, in your minds a sort of picture of how knowledge and belief work when you're thinking about things in, po in terms of possible worlds. Because one way of thinking about inquiry, that is the process of forming beliefs and of gaining knowledge, is that you're looking at the space of possible worlds and you're trying to figure out, well, which one am I in? Well, we know exactly one of them is the actual world. And by coming to believe things or coming to know things, you're zooming on in on which world is actual. So we have our picture once more of logical space with all the different worlds in it. When we're inquiring, when we're forming beliefs, coming to know things, we're looking at the space of worlds. One way to think about it is we're looking at the space of worlds and we're trying to say, well, which one am I in? Because remember, when you find the one that you're in, well, that settles all the answers to all the possible questions you have. And if you find the actual one, then it will give you the true answers to all the questions you might possibly have. Now, the way you do this, the way that you zoom in on the actual world is by comparing it to what you know or believe and seeing whether it's consistent with what you know or believe. If it is consistent, then for all you know so far, it could be the actual world and you'll need to get more information. However, if it's not consistent, then you can rule it out of contention. You know that it's not the actual world. So to get a slightly better picture of that, we're going to imagine just a sort of artificial scenario um, artificial because it's going to be simple in a way that lets us see a bit better what's going on here. So let's imagine that there are two lotteries taking place and we're listening to the results of them. And we hear the announcer say the result for the first one. We hear them say Alice won the first lottery, but we can't quite make out what they say about the second. We know they either said that Bertie won or that Billy won. You know, it's one of those two names. It was something beginning with a B, but we can't exactly, we couldn't hear exactly which one it was. So we know, we know Alice won the first, we're not sure what, which of Billy or Bertie won the second. So now let's start comparing that to thinking through this in the possible worlds picture. So what I'll do is I'll just first focus on three worlds. I'll call them world one, world two, and world three. And we're going to imagine that certain things are true in these different worlds. So I'm going to just stipulate that world one is a world where Billy wins the first lottery and uh, let's say Alice wins the second. World two is one where Alice wins the first and Billy wins the second. And finally world three is one where again Alice wins one but instead Bertie wins the second. Okay, now remember these are possible worlds so there's far more going on in them than just these facts, but that's all we're gonna focus on. That's all we're gonna pay attention to so far because we'll imagine we don't know anything else except what we've said in this scenario. So now once we've set this up, we can go through each of the worlds and we can ask, is this consistent with what we know and believe in the scenario? And we can immediately rule out the first world. We can immediately rule out this world because we know it's not consistent with what we know about the first draw. We know that Alice won the first draw. That's what the announcer said. So we can rule out world one. World one is not consistent with what we know and believe. Can we rule out anything further? Well, the answer is no, because both of these agree with us on the result of the first lottery. We know that Alice won, and that's indeed what happens in worlds two and three. 
And while they disagree about the result of the second, well, we don't know about the result of the second. Each of these is a, is a possible winner, for all we know. So we cannot rule out any. We cannot rule out any further worlds, for all we said so far. Either of these is a world that could be actual. Either of these could be the world that we're actually in. So what we've done is we've introduced this notion of a world being consistent with what you know, and here's like a simple picture of one world that's not consistent with what we know, and two worlds which are. So we've just looked at a small uh, number of worlds. <coughs> and checked whether they're consistent with what we know. But of course there are lots more worlds than just these three. Now we couldn't do this in practice, but in theory you could go through each of the worlds and you could check whether they're consistent or not with what you know. So let's imagine we go through and we see, we, we manage to rule out all these worlds. And if you keep doing that, eventually you'll isolate a set of worlds which is exactly the worlds that are consistent with what you believe or know. So uh, I'll imagine that the black ones, um, the black circle is the set of worlds consistent with what you know. Here's a different circle. It's the set of worlds consistent with what you believe. And I'll write K for the knowledge one and B for the belief one. So what we've done is, now that we have this idea of the worlds that are consistent with what you know or believe, we can find the set of exactly those ones which are consistent with what you know or believe by checking each world and seeing whether it's consistent. Now again, this is something you could only do in theory, but not in practice, but those, those sets are there. The reason why we've gone to such work isolating these sets is because these are exactly the ones that are going to be relevant for stating the theory that we're working up to. One last thing that I want to remark on before I tell you what the theory is, is that it's important to remember that these things, the knowledge set and the belief set, notice that they are propositions according to the possible worlds theory. Because the possible worlds theory proposition says that any set of worlds is a proposition, and these are indeed sets of worlds. Um, and that's going to be important because it's going to allow us eventually to start thinking about knowledge and belief in terms of, of entailment. So that's just a little bit of foreshadowing. Don't worry too much yet if you don't get that. So we've isolated the belief set, we've isolated the knowledge set, and now we can use those things to say what our theory is, what the simple theory is. And this is a theory that was given by the philosopher Jaco Hintike. And the theory is very, is kind of relatively simple. It says that, well, you know something, you know P, just in case it's true, P is true in all the worlds that are consistent with what you know. And likewise, you, you believe P if P is consistent with all the worlds, sorry, it's true in all the worlds that are consistent with what you believe. So let me write that down. Starting with belief, you believe P, right, if, that, if and only if, or just in case, these mean the, the same thing, you, be, you believe P, if and only if, um, P is true throughout the belief set. Remember the belief set, that's the set of worlds exactly the set of worlds consistent with what you believe. So this theory is saying you believe P just in case P is true in all the worlds consistent with what you believe. The theory says something similar about knowledge. You know P if P is true throughout the knowledge set. When I say true throughout, what I mean is true in every world in that set. So, you know P, that holds just in case P is true throughout your knowledge set. One thing that's going to help help us, I'll allow you to work through it yourselves, but I'll, I'll just, I'll state it now. One thing that's going to help us is that there's a way of rephrasing both of these things in terms of entailment, which is actually makes it 
very easy to think through what knowledge and belief amount to um, when we start drawing the pictures again. Because remember what I was hinting at, that you could do this in terms of entailment. And I also said, well, it's important that this is a proposition. Because these two things are both propositions, um, what we're actually able to do is we're able to rewrite this in terms of the kinds of entailments that hold between two, these two things. And the way that we're going to write it is as follows. We're going to say that you believe P just in case your belief set entails P. And likewise, you know P just in case your knowledge set entails P. And just to give you the sense why that holds, remember, if be, on our possible worlds theory, if the belief set entails P, that means that every world in this set is also in that set. Likewise, every world in that set is also in that set. Okay, so unpack, to unpack that a little bit more, we're going to draw one last picture. And this picture will help you see why we're able to state it in terms of entailment and why that helps. Okay, so here, again, is logical space. What we're going to do is we're first going to draw the belief set. So this is our belief set, and I'll just write it as B for simplicity. And we're going to draw three more propositions. We're first going to draw P. Notice that here that the belief set is a subset of P. Um, everything that's in the belief set is in P. Our second proposition is going to overlap with the belief set, but it's not going to completely include it. We'll call this proposition Q. And our final proposition, we'll call it R, is not going to overlap at all. It's completely outside B. Um, another way of saying this is that B and R are disjoint. Okay, so we have B, we have these three propositions, we know they're propositions because they're sets of worlds. And we can now ask, in this picture, which if any of these three propositions do you believe? Um, and let's start with P. Is this a picture where you believe P? And the answer is, in fact, yes, this is a picture where you believe P. Because first, let's remember, what does it take to believe P in this picture? Well, it's for P to be true throughout your belief set. It's for, it's for P to be true in all the worlds um, compatible with what you believe. And is that the case? Well, we can see, well, in fact, since B is a subset of P, that is the case. If B is a subset of P, then every world in B is a world in P. So every world in B, the belief set, must be one where P is true i.e. P is true throughout the belief set. So since the belief set is a subset of P, that means all the belief set worlds are P worlds, hence you believe P. So do you believe P here? The answer is yes, because P, because B is a subset of P. Let's think about Q. Is this a picture where you believe Q? Here the answer is no. This is not a picture of a situation where you believe Q. Uh, and the answer is because Q is not, because B is not a subset of Q. So remember what we said about um, negation. So we know that Q is true inside the blue set, but it's false everywhere else. But some of the belief worlds, some of your belief set is outside Q. So focus on this black part. This is outside Q, 
So these must be worlds where not Q holds. So for instance, take this world. We know it's one where not Q is true. Because it's not in Q. But then this means that there is a world consistent with what you believe, where Q is false, where it's not the case that Q is true. So then it, mu it must not be the case that you believe Q. So, th so th the very fact that the belief set is not a subset of Q means that there are some worlds outside of Q, and those must be not Q worlds, and so you don't believe Q. So do you believe Q? And the answer is no. In fact, with respect to Q, this is a picture of, whether, of where you, you haven't actually made up your mind whether Q or not. Because some of the worlds are Q worlds. So remember this black, this black circle, that's your belief set. Some of the worlds are Q worlds, like this. Picture this world. That's a Q world. But some of them are not Q worlds. So there are both Q worlds and not Q worlds consistent with what you believe. So this is a situation where you haven't made up your mind about Q. Um, so, or another way of putting it, you're agnostic about Q. Okay, so let's move on to our final proposition, R. And ask again, well, is this a situation where you believe R? And again, the answer is no. Because remember, this is our belief set. For you to believe something on this theory is for all of the worlds in your belief set to be worlds where R is true. It's for all the worlds consistent with what you believe to be ones where R is true. R has to be true in all the worlds consistent with what you believe. But in fact, if these are the R worlds, if R is true over here, then not R must be true everywhere else. So I won't draw it because it will get too messy, but everywhere that's not in this red region is a world where not R is true. That means that everywhere inside B is, is a world where not R is true. Um, so it's not the case that R is true in every world consistent with what you believe. In fact, it's false in every world consistent with what you believe, so you don't believe it. So do you believe R? The answer again is no. And in fact, this is situation is different. It's different from Q. So with Q, we saw there were worlds of both kinds. Some were worlds where Q is the case, others were worlds where, R, where, Q, where Q is not the case. But well, things are different with R. If these are all the R worlds, then not R is true everywhere else. So in particular, all of the worlds in here are not R worlds. So this Q world, it's a not R world. And this other, and this not Q world is also a not R world. In fact, if you go through them, by the way we set this up, all of them have to be not R worlds. So rather than being agnostic about Q, Sorry, rather than being agnostic about R, you in fact believe R is false, i.e. you believe not R. So again, you don't believe R because R is not a sub, is a, sorry, B is not a subset of R. Um, in fact, you believe not R because B is a subset of not R, because not R is is the region outside, it's everything that's not red, and B is part of the region um, that is not red. Okay, so we're going to leave things there for today. What we did in this section was we applied the world, the uh, ideas of possible worlds and propositions to knowledge and belief. We first painted this picture of what inquiry amounts to in the possible worlds framework. Um, it's ruling out worlds that are inconsistent what you believe. We then showed how to get to get to this idea of the belief set and the knowledge set. It's exactly those worlds that are consistent what you believe or know. Our theory then states knowledge and belief in terms of those ideas. To believe something is just for it to be true throughout your belief set, i.e. true in all the worlds consistent what you believe. The same goes for knowledge. For you to know something is for it to be true in your knowledge set 
i.e. true in every world, consistent with what you know. And then we finally saw how that we can think about the same situation in terms of entailment. Um, we saw before that for, once, for one proposition to entail, so for a proposition P to entail Q, that's for P to be a subset of Q. And then we drew this picture where we can see, well, um, this is a situation where you believe P because um, your belief set entails P, but it's not a situation where you believe either Q or R because Q is not entailed by your belief set because it's because your belief set is not a subset of it. Likewise, R is not entailed by your belief set because R is not a subset of P. Um, so this allows us to um, draw kind of illuminating pictures of what belief and knowledge amount to.